Welcome everyone to the Converge and welcome to our session. Uh, I'm Radu Hrabczak and I'm Director of Product Management at Citrix, uh, responsible for Micro's platform. And I have uh, here with me Tomasz Werner, who is Director of Product Management at, uh, at Citrix, and Seth Helgeson, founder and CEO of TechEGA Consultancy that helps customers to gain refreshing perspective of their business processes and strategic initiatives through the eyes of skilled workflow architects and system integrators. I'm happy to open this session where we want to talk about how can leveraging IPS platforms augment the ability to create interesting and valuable solutions by integrating non-standard or non-restful APIs. Let's start. Um, let me walk you quickly through the agenda of today's session. So uh, we will walk you through the problem definition where we will talk about uh, the business problem. We will demonstrate the step-by-step -step solution for. We'll talk about the actors of the game. We'll talk briefly about the systems we wired together to make this solution happen and to solve the business problem. We'll talk about technical challenges that we needed to overcome at this journey. Of course, we will show you the demo and um, Yes, it's not very obvious to have to be a demo at the beginning or as uh, as a first part of a session, but we want to set a context so we feel, feel uh, comfortable about understanding what we are trying to solve for. We'll walk you through the solution approach where we will go through the bones of the solution and talk about the technical challenges we needed to overcome and how we did it. And now let me hand over to Seth Helgeson from Black Ego to introduce himself. Hello, hello, everyone. Um, yes, my name is Seth Elgison. I'm with Tech Ego. I've uh, founded Tech Ego back in 2004 as a software consultancy uh, that helped businesses revamp uh, processes and um, was the very first Podio partner in the United States and been a Citrix uh, partner for about uh, a decade now. And I've had uh, a lot of fun building and automating uh, business systems and platforms. And so I look forward to uh, jumping in and showing this real world uh, use case that we've, we've created here. So with our software as the backend system for um, extending workspace. So I'm very excited. Okay, Seth, could you walk us through the problem definition that uh, we were trying or we were solving uh, through this journey? Absolutely. So we have a, um, a use case, and I'll just call it ABC Towing, but it's a real company that, uh, not ABC Towing, but uh, we did this use case for a real company, and they're needing to um, have a tow truck to actually, ABC Towing had uh, holds a contract with Salt Lake County, uh, Utah, and where they're the go-to company for uh, police and highway patrol and office, um, other emergency services. And their dispatch, dispatch department um, uses Podio as their project management system. And in doing so, um, you know, they needed to be able to, um, agents receiving calls for dispatch re requests um, and concerning the vehicles that need to get towed or recovered from an accident uh, need to be put into the system and dispatch dispatched out. So they've been wanting to a way to improve their processes and streamline operations because right now the way that it functioned was um, everything was done manually and having to uh, uh, take, a, take a phone call on one system and uh, sending emails in another, and then they had homegrown systems as well. But then they would have to go into a, a platform called the Teletrack Navman uh, to then actually manually dispatch, and even then getting notifications out and looking up vehicles of the statuses is, uh, was quite challenging. Um, but because of their contractual requirements, they had to um, get that dispatching down uh, to a real-time dispatching. And so, in order to improve those processes, that required them to um, have the ability to dispatch vehicles in real time to be able to show uh, what vehicles are in the areas, um, what what um, you know, what vehicles are in the area and closest to the tow location. So for rapid response and clearing accidents, they needed to be able to do that real time. Um, but they need to be able to see all of their fleet locations immediately. Um, and so we've got a, a solution for that. 
the closest vehicle returned to the agent, um, they'd be able to then dispatch it immediately from the system once that, those values are returned. Um, the location of the vehicle to be towed uh, is required that it become a project site so that way they can get perim uh, parameter alarms uh, that are triggered uh, to go into the tow truck w once it gets about 250, mile, uh, 250 yards away from um, the final location and then also a uh, arrival alarm um, so that way it's marked correctly in their system of record which is Podio. But one of the biggest uh, issues is there, due to their audit auditing requirements, um, each agent is required to use their own personal accounts within any system for all dispatch activities to fully log, uh, so that they're fully logged and audited for, uh, because they're handling state uh, uh, dispatches. And for them to be able to handle credential swapping from one system to another as uh, one user's entering in details, dispatching, or even uh, receiving phone calls. So we need to be able to track all that. So in this instance, uh, Citrix Workspace will act as the system that uh, will fill in the technological gaps of both the uh, Podio and Teletrack Navman uh, director system and allow for the dispatching agents uh, and the ability for those calls and logistics to get handled through a single user interface with streamlined operations. Thank you, Sad. Uh, would, yeah. you, uh, would you briefly walk us through the actors no. uh, we have in this game? Yeah, absolutely. So the actors in this game here are the Citrix Workspace is uh, our solution for helping organizations and employees um, improve productivity by offering integrated um, social solutions or single stop solutions for employees to deal with content, data, and tasks without uh, context switching. Uh, Podio is a flexible and highly customizable web-based platform for organizing team communication, business processes, data, and content and project management workspaces, uh, really according to any project needs. It's almost like a build your own database, uh, build, your, build your own CRM solution, which is, uh, uh, is incredibly powerful. Uh, my company as um, Tech Ego, that we own a software called thatapp.io, and there's a couple solutions, but one of them is uh, Sync, sync.thatapp.io. That's a cloud backup solution that allows its users to uh, have the ability to manage and manage with great ease um, their data lake, create a data lake, manage it with great ease, and then also do data mesh and aggregation services that are provided through our, our system. And then we have um, a third party, um, well, it's a, an iPaaS solution platform called Ava. And it's your automated virtual assistant for workflow automation engine into third party systems, uh, APIs, databases, um, SOAP connectors, and so forth. And this allows us to sync all of uh, customers' data from a cloud platform into one centralized location. Um, so you actually have to do less API calls and less heavy lifting. Uh, in your data management and processing of data. And then the final one is uh, Teletrack Navman. Um, they're one of the largest uh, telematics companies in the world, and uh, they are global, and, and they've uh, referred uh, quite a few customers to us to be able to implement uh, business processes that will streamline their telematic requirements for their customers. And um, their platform allows for real-time real data, driver data through GPS, and asset tracking. Uh, for visibility, visibility and fleet tracking uh, services. So I think that's uh, those are the actors in this game. And then um, at this point, we can go ahead and hand it over to Thomas, and he will show us the solution that we built in uh, Workspace. Absolutely. Thank you, Seth. Uh, I'm so excited to take in part with you on this session. Uh, in this session we, session, we are about to demonstrate how to overcome some workspace with intelligence limitations. Currently, workspace does not support non-REST APIs. And uh, workspace uh, is not able to integrate system of record per user, which model is commonly used in modern applications where there is uh, no service account available, uh, as it is the case, for example, for Office 365. And in process, we will look uh, on some automation capabilities which are not part of the workspace. Uh, one of the possible solutions how to overcome those limitations is to use iPaaS platform as a middleware between applications and workspace. I am happy uh, to have a chance to collaborate on this with Seth uh, Helgeson here, 
So let's see uh, what those challenges are, which Seth will be describing later in detail, how we have overcome those. We've chosen following use cases to demonstrate the power of the combination of iPath uh, and Workspace and the value it can bring to you as a developer partner or a customer. The problems we are going to tackle in these sessions are how to connect an application which does not support REST API. That is uh, why we have chosen Teletrack Navman for this session. Teletrack Navman is based on SOAP protocol and does not, does not support REST API. Another question is how we can authenticate user via iPath platform. Currently, we support service actions, which can be executed in the context of the user, but we don't support data extraction per user. In this session, we will integrate to Podio per user without the need to have a service account. We integrate Workspace to AVA and uh, AVA to Podio by granting the access token, and the request, in fact, will be executed from AVA on behalf of the user and the integration of workspace will be only to iPath platform. And uh, as uh, was mentioned, we will use some automation capabilities for generating notifications using our platform in, in real, real time. So uh, I am ready to show the demo. So please make yourself comfortable. Uh, the show is about to begin. So you can see my screen. Uh, with workspace. For this demo, we have three personas. First of all, uh, it is a customer who wants to request a car tour, the dispatcher who is processing the tow request, and finally a driver uh, who actually is doing the tow. We want to make a lively sale for all those three parties concerned. Now I am a dispatcher and I am requesting a tow with information provided by the customer. So let me head to the workspace and uh, open the action, which is a uh, report a vehicle action. Owner of the car uh, is Tomasz Werner. I will enter pretty quick all necessary information required for a tow. Year of the build, vehicle build, vehicle model is here. Uh, 1500 is the GMC, color black, license plate, oh, la, la. Uh, tow type is uh, broken down, property name is home depot, and the address. is this one now the request was sent and i need to wait for two notifications one is for a dispatcher and one is for a driver by sending the request uh, the workflows in ava are executed the record is stored in podio uh, which serves a, in this, as system of record and also the trackman is contacted and the trackman navman application should provide the nearest uh, driver available to the uh, requested location of the car uh, i have two accounts open this is a dispatcher because you can see i can report a tow here and here is the Here's the driver's workspace. Uh, in reality, the driver would use mobile uh, mobile uh, application more likely because he's uh, driving around. So let's wait for the notifications to appear. You can see that the driver is informed what the location is, uh, where it should uh, go, how far it's from his position for the... Uh, tow is for and also the contact information so that the driver can actually uh, contact the customer if there are some uh, clarification to be done 
I'm waiting for a notification for a dispatcher that the driver was uh, assigned. So maybe Tomas just check okay. if you have. Okay, so okay. it's here. here. we go. The tow has been assigned to a driver and driver is heading to a location to actually retrieve uh, uh, retrieve the the car. Got it. Uh, and also the truckman, uh, Northman truckman, is actually starting sending the notifications with the progress, which should also appear uh, soon. So let's wait for those. Yeah, you can see that the tow is in progress. Uh, there is that, uh, again, for the tow request is uh, accepted. And then the, that the driver arrived at the location. And uh, the tow driver is actually heading to the uh, tow location. And the final state is that uh, the driver arrived to the location and he can start uh, moving the car uh, to actually like where the customer want to be. So the, that's, uh, yes. The beauty of this is basically we're, we, we don't have to wait for the regular synchronization to be performed, but we rely on a webhooks Tomas will talk about uh, so that we can basically present the notifications uh, close to real time. As you could see, there is a, some lead time for the notifications to be processed um, in, in AVA and Teletruck now, man, but basically it does not need to wait uh, minutes or tens of minutes for the sync process to be completed, but it's, it's close to real time. Uh, another beauty is that uh, at least from the workspace side, uh, the configuration and build experience is pretty easy and pretty quick. So let me guide how these uh, micro apps work or, and what's necessary to build them. And Seth later will show what has to be done on the middleware side using iPaaS uh, and the application. So for this demo uh, to work or for this application to work, we have one integration and it's integration to AVA. We don't have, uh, we have only three webhooks listeners. All three are configured to AVA and are waiting to, for the data. Uh, there, now, as is a demo and proof of concept, we don't have any authorizations to AVA, but some uh, supported uh, authorization and authentication can be used uh, if it's uh, configured on both sides, AVA and Workspace. So uh, we can use any authentication which is currently supported by Workspace. Uh, each, uh, they are, so for this demo to work, we only need three webhooks. Uh, here on the micro app side, you can see we have two micro apps. Let's start with the simple one, which is actually the driver notification which is uh, one notification uh, and it's related and it's configured for, for one webhook and built uh, with no surprises. Uh, and it's pretty simple to actually set up this one. More interesting thing is actually the another one, the report vehicle one, uh, where we have uh, two notifications, two pages, and one service action, uh, which is a report toll. So if we, we go ahead and see the page for a report toll, uh, it's a one form with the submit button, which executes the flows in the AVA. We have a driver details uh, page where you can see more details about the actually driver and who will be doing the toll. Uh, the notifications are configured for uh, users uh, only. 
so the Ava is always sending who uh, actually triggered back, who actually triggered the the flow, and that's defined who are who is receiving the notification. And again, uh, those notifications can be built in in span of actually minutes, and are configured each for each particular uh, webhook. Uh, Regarding the webhook uh, configuration, for example, for uh, technical dispatch, which is the first notification you saw earlier, you can see that it's flat structure and there are just all necessary information for the dispatcher to know about the driver and also. Uh, about his vehicle and uh, distance to the location. Yeah, so that's about the micro apps setup. Now uh, I will hand over to Seth and he will show you how it works on um, Avasite, uh, Podio, and Navman Teletrack application. Yeah, thank you very much for that. Thank you. Um, all right, I'm going to go ahead and steal presentation rise if that's all right. all right. I made you presenter, Seth. You can go. Perfect. Perfect. All right, let's go ahead and uh, move into uh, what we've got here. All right, as with any uh, good old product and platform, when we end up having uh, a system and, and working with customers, it, it always looks out uh, to be pretty simple in the beginning. And um, this started out with any just like any other project but as a simple tow request um let's say we have a workspace and then we have ava as the ipass platform but step one is a tow request coming in uh, we create an item in podio we create a job site inside of uh, teletrack navman um, we process the availability meaning we take the location data and we'll uh, leverage mongodb um, in our sync solution to actually query um, instantly every a distance all at once and so um, that's a bit faster than what Teletrack Navman uh, is able to do that um, so we sync down all the vehicles have their current uh, updates uh, within five minutes so that way we don't have to uh, wait on even longer for API calls to happen and then we can then query that data lake data we determine the vehicle availability to get the actual uh, distance from the vehicles and uh, then we feed that back into Ava and that goes into workspace as that notification second one is going to be the dispatch tow uh, once that tow comes in, it uh, would come in and create a record inside of Podio. It would uh, send the vehicle a dispatch message. It would uh, dispatch confirmation, would then go up into Ava to say, um, into and then passed into Workspace, um, allowing the dispatch representative to accept that um, dispatch. And then uh, once they arrive on site, it's an on site confirmation because they've now entered into a geofence uh, location. So it looks pretty simple in this respect, but when you actually start diving into and, and building out the, the actual flows to, to get it working perfectly, it uh, becomes a heck of a lot more complicated. So the reason why we want to go with Podio, and you'll see here that uh, Podio and Workspace, they kind of work together here, but we've got a couple, uh, a couple actors in this regard, or platforms. Um, we've got the customer uh, interactions. We have Podio as the CRM system that we want to be able to use for um, invoicing and uh, people be able to uh, monitor, you know, time tracking and so forth that they want to do inside of the, the systems uh, for their employees. We have a Citrix workspace. We then have Ava as the iPad solution. Sync is the backup solution. Teletrack is the telematics and then QuickBooks as the final invoicing for this customer. So in this respect, um, basically the flow of that workspace is a, a vehicle is broken down and a customer calls in and um, they would then take that call and enter in the dispatch location that we saw Thomas enter in earlier. Once that's submitted, it will hit the uh, trigger web flow into an Ava flow queue. Um, that is, uh, Ava is built on Kubernetes and Node.js um, and Docker containers. And so it's, it's very scalable and, and highly flexible of what we can actually do and build with it. But this flow queue is then handled by rabbit in queue and uh, this webhook trigger will go off and uh, go and create the 
job site for the geo coordinates in Teletrack. And uh, once that's put in place, it doesn't need to return anything else because we know that the job site is the latitude longitude of the vehicle um, that's been submitted via the address from the customer. But one thing is really great is our credentials here. Um, we have a solution for our sync product. All of the connectors for AVA, if a customer is able to authenticate um, their platform within AVA, then you can add as many authentication uh, platforms as you want into your workspace and uh, even into our sync solution. And it's one and the same in the passwords. And you're then able to dynamically swap the credentials um, in the system to use that in the header. And so long as you have an email address, we can then bind the user credentials to uh, the information. We can look it up in our system, or you could pass a token through uh, a webhook and uh, be able to use that internally, so long as the domains are, are uh, secure and there's no cross-site uh, forgery requests. So credentials here, um, we go into the sync solution and we'll bind those, grabbing out the correct uh, user credentials. Uh, the next step is creating a Podio item, and that goes over and creates the uh, request uh, dispatch request item creation. Um, uh, this next step is the sync process dispatch request, where um, this dispatch request is actually sent out to process the vehicle locations, and this is a replication set inside of MongoDB. Earlier, uh, we have a cron job that basically does asynchronous uh, vehicle snapshots every five minutes, and that pulls into the replication set into a vehicles table, and then this process right here queries those vehicles, so that way we have the data there uh, live and we don't have to make API calls. The next step here is it's a, we have a condition-based router that will then um, take the dispatch information. We create a dispatch record in Podio. We create a service action dispatch to the vehicle that's a uh, service ac action notification, which is then confirmed. Upon it being confirmed, it will send back the data in through the router and push it out to the dispatch driver. And at this point, uh, the Teletrack system is then taking over uh, the waypoints, the, the job accepted and so forth. And um, that's actually viewable right here inside of uh, Director Teletrack Navman. We can see all the, the dispatch times and, and where it was at and what, what locations, um, and job accepted, route started and so forth. Um, and at this point, you're able to see also even on the home screen cube uh, where it's at and uh, within Teletrack, you can then see what locations there were and um, all vehicles that are within the system that you can end up dispatching into. Um, and what that looks like as an actual dispatch, let me go ahead and pull this up. Share this real fast, sorry. Let me go and see if I can pull this up and share it with you guys. Let's see. Well, it kind of looks it looks a bit uh, rough here, but but um, as this is a GPS unit uh, that's inside the vehicle, and that will then receive the dispatch request directly from uh, Ava that came from the the system uh, within Workspace Citrix Workspace that we can then hit dispatch and go and start a new route. Okay. So with that example um, being in place, that was the dispatch being received, and that is the Teletrack Navman piece. So as those location actions end up coming, they will be automatically synced into the uh, sync vehicle location pings, uh, which is basically inside the MongoDB or sync system as well. Um, so here we have a uh, the router will then go in to fetch the driver updates. Um, where they're at, and um, depending on the speed of the system, uh, as you see in, in Thomas's demo, it uh, returned five items at once. So here we can go grab those, and it will pull out the notifications of, of what it was uh, process was, and then feed it back into the system. So post driver updates to the dispatch. Um, now we want to take the vehicle location updates and post this back in as service updates to uh, Workspace. We then want to take the vehicle logs and put them into Podio so that we can have the logging data inside of the single uh, system record uh, um, 
single source of truth or a system of record here. And then the text and email driver updates would then go and do a text and email to the customer, letting them know that their vehicle's on the way and what the location updates are. So um, that is the step processes there, but once it's all finished, there are other business processes that they need to um, continue to orchestrate as well. For example, you know, creating, updating, deleting uh, the customer's invoices based upon the, the, uh, the tow that was just completed, uh, that going off and hitting a webhook trigger, uh, creating a customer over in um, QuickBooks, and, um, and then coming down and next step of creating an invoice and creating that invoice of over here, linking it back to the customer, creating invoice, and then actually sending the invoice to the customer is a separate step workflow. So this is the, the overall full requirements of the system. And now that we've got this uh, architecture in mind, we can even go deeper in the Q&A session later. But uh, I wanna go ahead and jump into um, this AVA system real quick. Let's go ahead and pull this here. All right, so in here within Podio, um, we have the, the workspace where I've created some apps. Now, what's really great about Podio is it's it's kind of like a microservice uh, as well. It's part of the Citrix portfolio, but um, your tables within your your Converge, um, sorry, inside of your workspace environment where you're able to store data, um, you're able to do the exact same thing inside of here and building your apps to be able to store data in here. And so as data can flow in, it makes it a great and, and very versatile way to actually uh, develop an app, control web hooks and put data um, in it and store it in here uh, to be able to use it in any processes you want. So you can build a modify a template and actually using drag and drop fields, uh, similar to the micro app builder, you can build these fields and, and control your, your category. So it's a, it's a nice synergy that's, that's slowly coming together, but I'm very excited about that, that it is coming together. I'll change this to a badge type so I can actually see the requests. And at this point I can see um, each of the requests that have come through, obviously some tests that have gone through. So we can see this here at uh, Thomas Warner, um, this pop through the system. And as we go through and swap the variables, we can see that this is uh, Seth Helgeson and Thomas Warner that have been submitting it. But um, it goes through and says uh, he created this user uh, with his credentials 13 minutes ago. And now um, she came through and referenced this, Ava, um, then came through and used her credentials to update the tow location and all the detail with the dispatch details. And that related item right there is the dispatch information. This is 1.78 miles away from uh, the driver. And um, th this is the, this is the, basically it's being stored now inside of their system. So the sync, that, that app.io, this is the that app.io. You can log in with and authorize with Podio. And this is one ecosystem where you can validate. And um, we have our solutions of Ava, Sync, and Print and being able to create dynamic contracts, automate systems, and uh, uh, back up your solutions. But Ava, any of the integrations and on, um, platforms that you can integrate within there are then able to be used across all of the systems. So inside of here, having the ability to sync and back up a solution now creates and turns your system into a data lake with the ability to have a file backup, uh, even monitoring, and then be able to pull raw data hooks to be able to see uh, what data is inside of each of these apps. Um, you also have the ability to do pivot tables so you can then see what data is existing in all of your third-party systems and even be able to restore the, that data into those other systems. So this is the way that we sync all this data and system, uh, system data from cloud platforms into one centralized location to be able to see where data links together and be able to start doing that, those data merges. So to pull this all together within AVA, as you sign up for Sync and you look for an AVA account as well, you're gonna be automatically provisioned with uh, credentials and they're then synced and shared within uh, this one system. And it's created, you end up having a workspace created for you. So you have a Citrix um, or a space or workspace here. And then, or sorry, contract, a Citrix environment. And then um, you have workspaces and you can create as many workspaces as you need to be able to put your uh, automation flows inside the system. You have your dashboard where you can see what uh, automations have run and, and are running um, and things that are in process. You can see all of your uh, execution statistics 
um, execution data, including logs, uh, to be able to see what's flowing through the system. Um, and then down here we have our credentials. Now, in the credentials, like I mentioned earlier, you're able to enter in as many um, credentials as you need for a system. If you've got 10 databases, you can add um, 10 different database uh, connections in here. I can add a new credential and we are able to integrate with uh, really any, any any database type that we need to uh, oh, with ODBC connectors, um, open API scout documents, and basically uh, anything that you connect inside of here, um, you're then able to use it in, in, inside of Converge, uh, sorry, inside of Workspace as well. So it makes it uh, highly flexible and scalable and, and um, and the components to actually build your own connector are actually built in Node.js with an SDK that makes it uh, very, very simple to be able to start to onboard those. But once your credentials are inside the system, you can now build your flows. And the way that uh, Ava works here is we can have real-time flow processes. Each one of these is a is um, a flow queue, but it's basically a water flow uh, trickle-down effect uh, here in the in the flow processes. So if we go to, this is the first step of the tow requested uh, from Converge. We have a webhook URL. Um, I can see it's a real-time flow. That means uh, that the Docker container is always on, always sp uh, spun up and, um, and very scalable. Uh, right here is the webhook queue. Uh, when we come into a webhook, I can see this is a selected sample that we can then use uh, for building out all the additional steps down below. Uh, fetching a Podio user token. Uh, this is a database query that is going to come in and then grab that query where the user email um, here is uh, exists. And then create dispatch item for a Podio. So you can configure this and this is a the REST API here and I can configure the body and then take the values from the previous step and map them. And you can see that this translates it to show what the output's gonna look like. Um, this is what's called a JSON auto query um, that allows you to take massive JSON arrays and actually configure them, and that's actually built into the system. One of the really great uh, functionalities of, uh, of Ava is um, we have the ability to um, see what history has been done and edits. So every time you make a change to this, it actually creates a revision history, and you can revert back to any of these steps in case you have a, an issue that you've run into and you need to uh, basically uh, make some adjustments or changes to the system. But even though this is still flowing and, and running, I can hit edit flow. I can then uh, come in, uh, the, the operations will not be disrupted in any way whatsoever. It's making that uh, draft there and I can come in to create this item with Podio. And you can see here that this is a, uh, a versioning when I go through and if we update a the component, uh, which is this REST API component. Anytime it's updated, it's gonna create a new version. You can actually switch between the versions as well. Um, and here, I don't wanna use, uh, I'm gonna use no auth because uh, we have the AVA credentials we could use, but we wanna be able to do the credential swapping. So I'm gonna just basically put in here a no authentication, no auth as a credential, and then save that. And the next step, however, we're gonna go ahead and take the value from the previous step, we've got the JSON uh, format part. So we've got all the header there, the content. Um, we have the data from the previous step and we can even grab data from even additional previous steps. Um, then here's built-in expressions that can be used to be able to transform data. And then here's the mapping results. But as we come back to the headers here, you can see that uh, mapping results, we went ahead and took the token from the previous step and passed it into the authorization header. And that's how we're able to swap out um, different credentials based upon what user is sending the data via the webhook. And here we can see a generate sample. So this is how we populate the fields and come in, generate a sample, and it will return back the data um, that it was actually created. And then we're able to come into a summary. Now at the summary level, which is great, we can disable the pass through, which makes it uh, easier uh, lighter to be able to send those messages in and then show advanced settings here we can do parallel processing where at each of these nodes we can actually increase the bandwidth and actually the throughput of each of these nodes. 
So in this system, technically we wouldn't want to build the, the flows really big, um, but right here we can come down to uh, create item, sync item, and then fetch the distances. And because we have a replication set uh, in our MongoDB, um, our, our MongoDB connector doesn't, allow, doesn't have a, uh, a replication set connector um, built into it just yet. So what we have to do is, is we put in two nodes here. One's always going to fail depending on, on which one it's going to be on. And it's going to dispatch to another flow uh, for that same reason. Instead of running it twice, it will only ever run once. But this is a transferring data from one step uh, into another flow and basically passing that data over into another flow. Uh, we typically do this when we want to save on um, processing time and if we have really really big flows it can potentially slow down when you have to edit them now even though I've got this in draft mode I don't want to do anything with this draft let me go ahead and delete the draft and now my flow is still running and processing in real time the next step as I come back in here uh, we have the get vehicle snapshot as you can remember from the the design we have that asynchronous vehicle snapshots it's just running in the background uh, non-stop it basically goes and grabs uh, from Teletrack Navman does the login, gets the vehicles, and we can explode the vehicles or basically split them out and then we sync them into a uh, sync database. Coming here to the vehicle activity sync. Uh, so when the vehicle has actually uh, been processing, uh, we do another login, we dispatch the vehicle, and then we go through and get the vehicle activity, explode the messages, and then again, sync it into the um, MongoDB for sync.thatapp.io. The driver dispatch updates right here is uh, where we can come in. We've got uh, a dope hook there and uh, it receives all the information from the previous step, uh, which was the original dispatch. So right here, we're going to be dispatching to the um, dispatcher in uh, the details of the vehicle. We're going to dispatch to Podio, uh, the vehicles, uh, the details. And then we're also going to dispatch to the tow truck driver. Um, the uh, approval to go ahead and move forward with the tow. This is then going to dispatch the route data and we'll grab all the route data and pull it into a splitter. And then we're going to feed that uh, tow truck process back into the system uh, for Converge to be able to see exactly what that flow is uh, or where that location is at. So if we were to pass through another uh, message in the back end, uh, you would see um, the system light up, it just received it. It's incredibly fast in how quickly it processes everything. So there's that replication set error. It's already transferred that data into the system. And that then kicks off the other piece, which is the driver dispatch updates. And that's now just run and process those five updates and now push through into the system. And that would then go back into uh, Citrix Workspaces environment. So in this respect, um, we're able to really extend um, the platform and the system, you're able to have development uh, uh, quota usages. You can see how much uh, quota you're actually using and, and, and using um, on a daily basis, monthly basis. And then you're actually able to have development teams where you can actually create a workspace and that gives you a GitHub repository that then you're able to um, go to the workspace and actually uh, install your own uh, component connectors and so forth. So I'm hoping that uh, there's not too many other questions, but that is my piece of the demo. I hope this has uh, excited quite a few of you of how we can scale this even further. Thank you, Seth. Uh, I have to say it was an awesome journey, especially those uh, late night debugs and basically um, making this all thing uh, working. So I, I have to say I really enjoyed that journey. And uh, for all of you who would like to basically ask us questions, feel free to basically ask our uh, questions on uh, app-creation- and dash collaboration Slack channel on our Converge workspace. Or uh, we have uh, basically a group mention created here called uh, at integration. So feel free to use either either of those. Feel free to email us uh, if, you, if you have any additional questions. Or finally, join our Q&A session where we can basically answer your questions live hopefully 
So uh, that was it from our from our end. Hope you enjoyed that. Hope you basically will be able to leverage um, either Ava or some other app solution for building a complex solutions for your customers. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Goodbye. Bye bye.